we have some warriors on our side, including from the great state of Washington yep. that we love. Uh, Representative Marilyn Strickland joins us now. Good morning, Representative. Good morning. Thanks for having me on your show. Uh, thanks so much. for. I, I have to ask you, did you think in 2022 you would have to be voting to protect, uh, you know, same-sex marriage, contraception rights, a woman's ability to cross state lines to get health care? I mean, this is... No. Uh, yeah, go ahead. It, you know, it's crazy. So I'm a freshman in Congress. So this has yeah. been, you know, like, you know, 18 months. And I tell people, I can't believe it's already been almost two years. And I can't believe it has only been two years. Right. And you're right. You know, who thought in 2022 we'd be voting to protect the right to a safe and legal abortion and reproductive health care? And then, you know, hearing an opinion from one of the Supreme Court justices that basically opens the door and says, well, it's not protected in the Constitution. So a lot of us started thinking, well, what's next? Yeah. Well, you're a freshman, so you must have thought, is this hazing or is this always <laughs> like this? Is it always? I, I mean, I'm wearing my squad T-shirt because AOC, 17 other members of Congress arrested. Uh, you know, they were obviously protesting the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Um, so obviously, uh, Ayanna Presley, a bunch, num numerous, I don't know if you were part of this group, but exercising their First Amendment rights when, you know, if you'll forgive me with J the J6 hearing tomorrow, we still have, in my opinion, insurrectionists in Congress mm -hmm. that haven't been arrested. And these are we are protesting um, half the country losing their bodily autonomy. Right. Right. No, it's I mean, it's insane. And think about something like, you know, access to safe and legal abortion. That should be a private decision between a woman and her health care provider. And you think about what happened to that poor 10 year old girl where this thing became, you know, a national drama and it yeah. played out in something that should have been private and personal yeah. took a stage because it's become a wedge issue for people who don't believe in our basic rights i'm just curious i saw a clip on tv chris you might know you mm -hmm. wallow in right-wing world more yes. than i do but of <laughs> tucker carlson you know calling the president a liar saying well this i can't believe this whole thing and it's based on a lie does do they ever go back and apologize oh does god he, no did he ever retract no. that this was not a lie no oh. they just move on no, to the I next lie no, I mean, that's the thing about yeah. this media environment. People are fed a steady garbage of, spending a steady diet of garbage, yeah. and yeah. they believe yeah. it. And yeah. so people can just say anything, and people think it's true. Yeah. You tweeted, as a woman, I am fighting for uh, to protect abortion access after SCOTUS gutted our right to reproductive freedom. The Ensuring Women's Right to Reproductive Freedom Act will protect the constitutional right to travel across state lines to seek reproductive care. Um, I, again, shocking that you have to do this. <laughs> Right, but you do. Shocking that you have to do this, but you just never know. Right. And you know, we know Stephanie that after the after Roe v. Wade was gutted and shot down by the Supreme Court, twenty six states had something on deck to restrict the rights to travel. And you see, I mean, and here's the deal too: this isn't just affecting women who want to get an abortion. People want to get an abortion. It's making health care providers afraid to provide basic essential care to save lives. And there's an example in Michigan, for example, where a woman was denied service because she had a ruptured ectopic pregnancy because doctors feared prosecution. So it's yeah. not just affecting the rights of those women who need abortion services. Yeah. It's having an effect on the health care providers, too. Well, and Representative, the, as I keep saying on this show almost every day, an ectopic pregnancy is not a pregnancy. It's a medical right. crisis. It's never exactly. going to result in a pregnancy. I mean, it, it, it's this, well, and I'm glad you brought that up. The Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita has been hit with a formal misconduct complaint over his threats to prosecute a doctor who performed the abortion on that 10 year old. Um, yeah. he, they filed a complaint against him. They alleged he intended to harass and intimidate Dr. Caitlin Bernard when he falsely insinuated she did not properly file a report. She did report, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. In, uh, he, um, they uh, singled out Rokita's decision to public to disparage her, threatened to prosecute her during an interview on Fox News um, as a major red line that no attorney general should cross. They said the attorney general is tasked with protecting citizens, not going after them without evidence on television. It seems like these Republicans are so you know, eager to get on Fox News that they don't even check. I mean, the original didn't even check that there was a 10 year old raped in his state. Could not wait this to, to go on Fox News mm -hmm. to call this a lie. When all he had no, to do was call Columbus Police Department, correct? You know, no, no, correct. And again, this here's, here's what I, this is not about protecting the sanctity of life. This is about control. It's yeah. about controlling women's bodies. It's about controlling our economic opportunities. This is about control. And I said this on the steps of the Capitol when we had the presser with you know Speaker Pelosi and Lizzie Fletcher, the other co-sponsor of the bill. And this is about control. 
And if you look at all the different things that are happening, you know, we had to pass something to protect marriage. This is marriage between LGBTQ people and even interracial marriage, because you just don't know. You know, we're going to pass a bill tomorrow about protecting the right to contraception. Yeah. And, you know, some people will say, well, why are you doing all this? Because Roe v. Wade being overturned just opened the door to too much possibility of our rights being stripped away. Yeah. They took voting rights away. So I want to make sure that, you know, we are fully aware of what is happening right now. Yeah, well, that I mean, that's the thing is then they say the quiet part out loud, whether it's Clarence Thomas or Ted Cruz, just like, uh huh, yep, we're coming for marriage equality next. Okay. I mean, you know, so it, it anyway, I the other thing, again, it just sort of baffles me that it would be partisan anyway. You tweeted, I'm proud to support David Cicilline's Active Shooter Alert Act to give local police departments the ability to send out amber like messages during active shooter incidents. I, I wouldn't imagine anyone would disagree on this, that parents would like to know if there's an active shooter in there. Right. I, but Republicans voted against that as well. <laughs> right. Well, you know, you can't say you're the party of law and order mm -hmm. when you vote against things that will actually help law enforcement keep us more safe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, I don't I don't I don't understand how you do your job every day, particularly as a freshman. <laughs> if I were you, I would have just like gone uh, just in a cul-de-sac and just like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> No, you know, but, but here, this is really this is a really important distinction because you know I believe that for some people who are on the other side of the aisle, this is the whole point. They're trying to wear you down. They're trying to intimidate. Yes. You. They're trying to bully you. Yes. And I say to my colleagues, it's like this is a time when we really say, I'm not going anywhere. I am here to fight yeah. for the people and to fight for our civil rights. And I think it's so doable that we take the Senate. But you know, one thing that I know is I'm sure important to you and me too, is that we can't, we've got to stop playing into the, oh, well, we're going to lose the house. It's just, you know, oh. that's the way it goes. That's historically like, no, we cannot, we cannot, because they are not, they've already told you who they are. They're going to investigate Hunter Biden. They're going to try to impeach Merrick Garland, Joe Biden. They're not going to do anything that helps you. I mean, right now they voted against no, you know, price gouging at the gas pump, uh, baby formula, insulin, you name it, on and on. They voted against yeah. everything that might help the average American. No, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, what you have here is like, you know, the Democrats are earnestly trying to solve problems, right? Those bills that you just mentioned. And you have them voting no because they're trying to take our pain and use it for political gain and power. Yeah. And you're right, Stephanie, they have been, you know, in broad daylight, here's what we're going to do. I mean, look at January 6th. It couldn't have been more blatant about what the plan is. And so I tell people that, you know, as elected official, my job is to deliver for the people at home and in this country to try to solve problems. And I do believe that when we come to Congress, we have those intentions, but you have to ask yourself, what is going on when a party has been taken over by extremists and all they do is vote against every single bill and opportunity to help the American people yeah. right now? And Representative, you brought up January 6th, obviously the big hearing tomorrow. I mean, I, they were hoping that nobody <laughs> was paying attention or nobody, but I mean, you know, based on, and I'm sure tomorrow in primetime is going to get another huge rating, but you know, right. close to 60% of Americans are watching. 60% of them think Donald Trump should be prosecuted. So the January 6th hearings are breaking through, aren't they? No, they are. And, you know, to the credit of the committee, they are laying out the case in a very thoughtful way. They're not using a bunch of legal jargon. They're just telling the American people, Donald Trump knew he lost the election. Donald Trump aided and abetted this violent insurrection. And they were probably people that I served with who were complicit in this. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Well, uh, stay, get the popcorn ready for tomorrow night. Um, Representative, always a pleasure. I, it's so nice to meet you. Our last uh, show was in Seattle, so we're dying to go back. But anyway, thank you so Great. much. Well, thank, thank you for having me on. Yeah, come back anytime. Representative Mary, gentlemen of the great state of Washington. Woo. Thanks so much.